everybody doing? Uh, there is my voice. What a thing. Um, to those of you that have been following along for the last month, uh, I was talking to you the first week, and then the second and third week I wasn't, and it was just uh, silly technical stuff um, that you'd think after doing this for 25 plus years I would have figured out, but I didn't. But here I am. And it's good to be with you all um, on Wednesday, November 17th. Um, so uh, I think what I'm going to do this week is I'm going to just set you guys up for uh, what we're going to listen to for a while. And then at the end of that, uh, I'm going to talk some more about... Um, the last couple episodes, just because I didn't get a chance to clarify a few things there. Uh, and then I, on Instagram, asked people to send in a bunch of questions, and um, I figured I would get a few dozen, and I got hundreds. So um, I'll try and sort through a few of those and see if I can sort of compile answers that answer a handful of some of the common themes in the questions. Um, yeah, but so this week, um, our last installment of these rehearsal jam session recordings, <clears throat> um, first thing we're going to hear is actually just, um, a jam that we were doing, uh, when we were holed up in Tennessee in 2019, summer of 2019, we had all gotten together, the four of us to uh, really start working in earnest on all the material that's uh, ending up on time skips and ending up on the record after that. Um, and it was a great time, and uh, I think, so the first thing we're gonna hear is um, from mid-July of that, of that time, was just, um, I think we were improvising on a drone idea for something to go underneath uh, one of the parts of the, of the song we call King's Walk, which is a mostly a cappella um, thing that Dave wrote. He arranged all the parts. Um, he told me and Noah what he wanted us to sing, and we happily abided. Um, so we're going to hear that, and then that's actually just going to uh, seamlessly flow right into uh, a version of Stewing King's Walk, uh, also from 2019, uh, July 23rd, I think. And then that is going to slide right into a version of a song that I know many of you have been anticipating for a while, uh, that we love tremendously, called Defeat. And uh, this particular recording is from this last August. Um, uh, I think August 15th, and I think it's a pretty good version of it. Um, I flubbed up pretty badly right in the middle of the middle of the song. You'll hear it, but otherwise I think it's a pretty sweet one. Um, and then that is going to go into uh, 
uh, a version of Magicians uh, that we did on August 19th. And I'm pretty sure that version is one that we, um, we did an, uh, an, a, a live Instagram of. So some of you have already heard it, but I think this quality is a little bit better. And I just think it's a really good version of that song. Um, I listened through some of the others, and there's some other good ones too. Uh, but this one just sort of stands out for me. And just so nobody is uh, holding their breath, I'm not going to drop any singles. Um, uh, there will be more singles coming out before the record uh, comes out in February, but it's not going to be here. But after um, Magicians, uh, I will come back on and talk to you guys for a bit. And then I think I have some other more kind of ambient goodies to just sort of... If you feel like sticking around after that, uh, you can just kind of zone out and enjoy a few things um, less songy or just kind of nice pieces. Um, and that's it. Uh, I hope everyone's doing good and enjoys these shams. Um, yeah. See you soon.
Oh yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, that one gives me chills listening to it. They all do. It's exciting. Um, yeah, these jams. I am so excited to record all of these that have yet to be recorded. Defeat, magicians, kings. <clears throat> um, what do we uh, What do we got? We got. Uh, what we still haven't done. Um, uh, Broke Zodiac used to be known as Strangers. We still haven't done Gemini. Uh, these are going to be great. Um, Soul Capture. Oh, it's exciting. Really excited, guys. Um, so yeah, what we just heard is uh, we heard a. Um, Kind of just a King, King's Walk jam from uh, July 12th, 2019. It's actually playing underneath my voice right now. Then that went into a proper version of King's Walk from 2019 on July 23rd. Kind of a more ripping energy. I think we kind of chilled it out more recently. Um, but it was cool to hear that old version. Uh, and then a defeat from August 15th, 2021, not that long ago. Um, and yeah, that felt like a good one. Uh, and then a Magicians from August 19th, 2021. Um, good, good stuff. Um, so yeah, let's see, let's go backwards. I just wanna clarify uh, what we did before. So last week, um, uh, we did, uh, Walker, which is going to be on time skips. That one's cool. That's the only song where Dave and I kind of switch roles on that record. Uh, I play bass on there. Um, and he, um, he is doing like some chromatic percussion stuff um, that he did in the studio. Um, uh, and I think on that live version, he just was using uh, my Nord with some chromatic sounds, like a xylophone or something, I don't even know. Um, but we juiced it up for the studio version. Uh, and then we did uh, Soul Capture. This is, again, this is episode three from last week now that I'm just filling in details on. So that walker uh, that we did was 2019, uh, July 23rd. Then the uh, Soul Capture, I believe, was from August 16th, 2021. That one I'm excited about, too. I also play bass on that. Dave plays guitar. Noah plays guitar, which is awesome. Doesn't get to doesn't get to do that that much. Um, all three of us singing some really nice three-way harmonies that I'm I'm a big fan of. Um, Brian's got the beat going on his modular and playing the hurdy gurdy. It's just a that one feels really good. Um, and then we had a, a version of Stride Right. One of my songs, which I'm excited about. Oh, that one we're recording soon, too. Very soon. Um, the version from last week was August 17th, 2021. Um, I'm probably giving you guys more dates than you need to know. Anyway, there was a passerby uh, and a broke zodiac. Um, yeah, Broke. I'm excited for that one. Yeah, Broke. Somebody asked one of the questions, were there any songs uh, that we got pretty far on uh, on this for time skips and they didn't work? And uh, yes, there was two. We, we worked pretty hard at Broke Zodiac and we worked pretty hard at Gemini and uh, they weren't bad. They sounded just fine, but they sounded just fine and we knew they could sound better. Um, so those are on the list for um, upcoming recording session very soon, very soon. Um, so yeah, and then the week before that, when my mic wasn't working, um, we started off with uh, a version of Prester John. I don't even have the date in front of me, so good luck with that one. Um, a version of Cherokee. Uh, and a version of Genie's Open, um, also Sea of Light, 
All these titles, guys, they might change. You never know. And everybody gets so attached to one thing or the other, and then it changes. And the thing is, is that it always changes. And we're going to keep on changing stuff. Because that's just how it goes. Uh, and it's part of what makes it beautiful, the whole process. Um, uh, yeah, after that, Genies uh, was a demo that I recorded for a song I wrote or kind of came up with called What's on the Road, It's Shining. Uh, and I made that demo in preparation for the show that um, avian geologist and I did um, uh, in New Orleans at the Music Box Village, uh, which is an incredible venue, uh, art space, um, just a wonderful place run by really wonderful human beings in New Orleans, in Bywater, in the Bywater down there. Um, we did a show there in early 2018 um, that sort of, in a way, was the genesis for this whole era, um, even though Noah wasn't there. Um, it felt like kind of the beginning of, of some songwriting. A lot of songs came from there. Um, Royal and Desire came from there. Defeat came from there. Magicians came from there. Very early version of Prester John came from there. Um, uh, What's on the Road at Shining, which do not have any current plans to uh, necessarily record anymore, but it's there and I like it. I don't know, we'll see what happens to it. Um, maybe that's a solo endeavor. It's hard to say uh, where that will go. Um, so yeah, um, all this stuff, all this stuff. So many questions you guys ask. Uh, I'll see if I can try and answer some of them. Probably gonna be a lot of like, trying to, uh, let's see. Um, hmm, skimming through. Uh, this is just random. All right. Um, somebody asked, how do you guys settle creative differences in songs? How do we settle creative differences in songs? Um, you know, it's a process and it's something that we've been working on for a long time. And it's a combination of, um, you know, most songs, they were written by one person. I wrote a song, Dave wrote a song, or Noah wrote a song. And that, that person definitely gets like the they get the, the final say. Um, but I think we've all uh, learned how to find a balance of when to push and when to let go and realize that there's oftentimes a magic that comes from everybody finding the places where that's important and, and, and where it's not, um, which is a kind of a vague answer, but it's the reality of it. There's not really a clear way that we, um, that we meet in the same place other than just to sort of show up and meet in the same place and be open to the, the transition. Yeah, a lot of these questions and I, I think feedback we've gotten from fans, I think it's always this interesting thing of, of you guys get to hear versions of these songs um, live over long periods of time, especially over this, this last era because of the, the pandemic really slowed things down. And so you've heard us do certain songs live um, going back to 2018, going back to those music box shows. And then again in the fall of 2019, and that was a different vibe. And then again, um, this past uh, September and, and then these shows, getting to hear us kind of play stuff for you. And everybody has their favorite moments and they, you know, I wish the chorus was like this from 2018 still, and uh, why did they do this? And now oh, I like this so much more now, and everybody has different views. And um, I think the reason why I bring that up is because I think that's one of the things to me that is so special about music in general, and a lot of the music that I love is that there's not uh, a perfect version, you know? It's a constant uh, evolution of something. Uh, it's a constant discovery, and I think the reason why um, we embrace that so much is it's part of how we stay alive in it. I think we knew really early on, I've definitely said this before um, for many years, and I think other people in the group have as well. Um, one of the founding ideas around this group um, was that we were not uh, 
a band locked in stone um, that everybody had their designated roles and it would always be thus. Uh, I think that felt like it would feel really stagnant um, and we had already uh, found out um, after having played music together already so much through um, late grade school and high school that we had a lot of different uh, voices and a lot of different ways of expressing ourselves musically and if we sort of tied things too closely um, to one idea, it would get stagnant. And I think that that uh, translates into the songs themselves. I think that they are, they need to breathe and we need to always be able to find something new. And um, sometimes that newness is jarring to one person and sometimes it's a breath of fresh air to somebody else. Um, but the important thing is that for us, it's generally a breath of fresh air. It's definitely, it's generally a, a we're, we're, we're we're moving towards something and keeping it feeling like a discovery. Um, so that's a huge part of all of this. Um, I don't know if I answered anybody's question with that one. That was just me gabbing away. Um, uh, let's see, RJ Young 82 do, do we still have your poster somewhere? Uh, hey, if you did not get some merch that you ordered and you have a receipt, uh, please, 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 uh, DM us, or um, even better, uh, try writing to um, a merch company uh, where we handles our store and, and let them know. But, but if you don't hear anything back and, and it's clear, please let us know. Um, what else do we got? Uh, oh yeah, this is a big one, guys. Uh, so many questions like, when will you come to and it's so many wonderful places. Chile, South America, Mexico City, California, Boulder. Um, it's just the list is endless. And the, the answer is, is that I, I wish we could go to all of these places. Uh, uh, in so many ways, I think there's uh, part of uh, me in particular, but the group in general that of course wants to be, wants to be everywhere all the time. And the reality is, is that uh, we can't tour that much. Uh, it's just not, it's not possible. We have, um, I don't, but um, there are families and there are children and there are wives and there are um, greater sort of responsibilities in life that I think it just would be really crazy if we, you know, to, to, to hit to all of these places as much as uh, you guys want us to be there, it would be very difficult and probably burn us out and that's hard because I'd love to be traveling all of those places and I'd love to see you all. Um, uh, so we just try and balance it. But uh, we do plan on touring quite a bit next year um, as much as we are able and we have not announced all the tour dates yet at all. Um, we were hoping to be able to sort of just announce the, the whole year in one fell swoop, but for various reasons that wasn't possible. So we're just sort of waiting until each leg um, comes together and uh, and then we will announce it. Um, um, a lot of questions about uh, spirit. Uh, they're gone, spirit, they vanished. Uh, yes, there are plans to um, touch that one up and re-release it, um, for sure. I don't have any dates for you. There's a, there's a few things standing in the way, but uh, it's 100% on the list. Um, oh, I have to answer this one. Uh, some, some, a few people asked if uh, uh, they somehow think the lyrics for Prester John uh, telegraph the end of the group. Uh, they do not. Uh, Prester John is a song that was written in two parts. One part was written completely by Noah. Uh, it is his song. It is his melody. Um, he asked me to sing a harmony on it with him, which uh, I love singing, but it's his song. Uh, and his lyrics are about whatever they mean to him, and I won't say, but they certainly do not mean uh, that the group is over. Uh, and then the second half is, is written by Dave, um, so that's that. Um, a lot of people are curious about uh, the recording process for time skiffs. Some people seem to not even uh, know how we did it. Uh, we were um, planning on going into a studio because uh, we were ready to go um, in uh, March of 2020. We were like a, literally about to make plans. We had an engineer lined up. Um, we had a couple different studios we wanted to go to and uh, that all got pulled out from underneath of us along with everything else for everyone. Um, certainly not 
a huge problem in the grand scheme of uh, the grand scream of everything. Um, but it was a, a tough one, and we weren't sure what to do for a while, and so we sort of felt like we were just going to wait until we could go into a studio. Um, and that was sort of what led to us doing um, the Bridge to Quiet EP, because we were kind of just sitting on our hands and really anxious to be making music, and we couldn't see each other, because we, uh, we don't all live in the same place. Um, Noah lives in Europe, the rest of us live in the US on the East Coast, but um, many, many, many miles apart, states apart, and uh, so there was no easy way to travel together to do stuff. So we did Bridge to Quiet um, remotely from each of our individual studios, um, and it was really fun, and I think we felt really satisfied with it. Um, and then the reality of the pandemic just really started to settle in, that there was no end in sight to a time when it made sense for Noah to fly transatlantically and for us all to go into a studio, the amount of quarantining it would take um, was daunting, especially for the parents. Um, it would mean, it would have meant months away from their children um, and wives, which would have uh, been really crazy to do. So we did it remotely. We recorded time skips um, separately. Uh, it was many things. It was mostly fantastic. Um, I'm really grateful that we're able to do it. Uh, I think we all are 100% excited about the result. We wouldn't have released it if we weren't. Um, and the process uh, had its pros and cons, which some, a few people have asked about. Um, um, there was definitely cons. The cons are that uh, you know there's no question that when you're playing music, um, in the same room together, that there is a certain amount of um, nonverbal communication and intuition that kicks in, um, and you find magical relationships between sounds and, um, you know, uh, even sort of like rhythmic kind of stuff can sort of develop in a certain way when you're just really um, vibing off each other in the moment, and that was taken away. I think to our advantage uh, was that we had been playing those songs already a lot um, in practices and live, so we really had, you know, 80% 80, 80 or more of the arrangements pretty locked in, and we felt pretty good about them, so we weren't really needing to reinvent the, the wheel on much. Um, it was mostly just kind of executing what we already had and then fine-tuning it. Um, and so I think in that sense, that was, that was one of the pros, is that, um, and it goes both ways, but when you're in a studio and you're needing to overdub a part, um, there can be uh, sometimes like a, a strain that's uncomfortable and maybe counter to being um, productive when you sort of feel like the clock is ticking and everyone's staring at you through the glass. Uh, uh, you can develop um, sort of a bit of a red light anxiety. It happens to the best of us. Um, so it was really nice to be able to just sit with a session or a song um, and know that you kind of had something you needed to work out and spend some time fine tuning it at your own pace uh, with your own energy without anyone staring at you, without any, you know, real sense of the clock ticking or studio costs skyrocketing um, and when you felt good about it just to send it off uh, and that was really great and I've heard other guys in the band um, express the same uh, that part was really nice but it, you know it was a give and take and uh, there's a ton of moments on the record where it would have been awesome to have everyone in the room and um, so yeah um, somebody asked about uh, advice for artists who are scared to put their music out. Yeah. Um, that's near and dear to me. I was scared for a really long time. Uh, before I put out Sleep Cycle, it was terrifying. And it still is to some degree. Uh, uh, I don't know if that necessarily ever goes away for everyone. Some people probably don't feel that at all, ever. Some people... Um, feel it forever, no matter how 
much they feel like their music has been heard um, and accepted. Um, I think that if it's something that you feel uh, you have to do, then do it and learn to uh, ride the waves of those feelings. Because I, I think that uh, if you're doing it for the right reasons and you can give yourself the space to be imperfect, because we all are, uh, I certainly am, our band certainly is, and you certainly are, um, that's part of it. That's, it you, you just have to do it. Uh, I think it's better to, um, I think it's better to do it in the face of fear as long as you feel like there's something in what you're doing that feels important to you, than it is to just sit on it forever um, and wonder what would have happened or feel like you haven't been able to express yourself. Um, I personally uh, battled with that question a lot. Um, I, yeah, duh, a number of people have asked and I might as well. So yeah, uh, w when the group, um, wrote Meriwether and I was not part of it. Um, there was a lot of very specific reasons for me why I wasn't. I was going through a lot personally uh, and I was not in very good shape to be making music with anybody at that moment. Um, but it was, it was really hard to be on the other side of that. It was, um, I think somebody asked if it was low key difficult. Uh, it was tremendously difficult. Um, I love making music and I love my bandmates I heard the music they were making and it was magical to me too. I, I heard I heard the wonder of it and it was difficult to not be part of it. And I went through a lot of soul searching and I really, I had other people question whether or not music was even something I was really supposed to be doing. And I think there was points where it felt um, what I was going through, un unrelated to the band, but related to my own relationship to music, uh, that felt so difficult that I felt like if I could feel okay not putting it out or not making music anymore and just do something else, I would, because I might actually feel healthier. And that didn't feel authentic. It didn't feel like me and the part of me that um, had something to say and a voice to use and songs to write just would not let up. Um, it was not easy. It was terrifying. Uh, it was lonely. Um, it was uh, alienating. It was it was really hard. Uh, no question at all. And people tried to be there for me and tried to help me and sometimes that worked and oftentimes it didn't. And at the end of the day it was a relationship with myself and my own relationship to music that I had to grapple with. So I think it's not a small question to ask for advice um, for artists who are scared to put their music out. Um, it's a big thing. And I guess all I can say is uh, if you feel like it's something you need to do, you, you should really put in the work to do it. It's really important. Um, Yeah, all right. That was a lot of talking. Um, so I think, um, yeah, I'm gonna just leave you guys with a few, uh, these are just little things. I think what I got lined up is, um, uh, I think first is a, a little voice memo uh, that I had on my phone from the 2018 writing sessions uh, that uh, Dave, Noah, uh, sorry, Dave and Brian and I had getting ready for the music box. We met up in Baltimore, um, and uh, it's, you're mostly going to hear me playing piano because I think it was next to the piano, but you can hear Dave and Brian in the background. I think it sounds cool. It's sort of the early genesis of us kind of trying to find a vibe for that. Uh, and then that is going to. Uh, fade into um, probably a far too long section, or maybe not long enough, depending on how much you want to zone out, um, of uh, the four of us this last August um, just jamming on the, uh, the, the first chord of defeat in our kind of current setup. So we're just, it's just, I think we, uh, Dave was 
had set up a new keyboard to play and we just were finding a vibe and so I think we just sort of jammed um, on the kind of like yeah the first progression of the first part of the feet without vocals for I don't know eight or nine minutes I think you're gonna hear it um, feel free to tune out or tune in and zone out uh, and then after that is another section uh, of me playing piano uh, into my iPhone from 2018 and that will be the end of it it's been a long one guys it's been over an hour I've talked forever um, and this sign off will be um, the last one for a minute uh, we don't have any plans to do any more of these uh, necessarily this year, um, but uh, we also might. I, I like it as a format, and I think uh, now that we've sort of done this particular segment, um, I wouldn't necessarily do the same exact format again, but um, I might try and set something some up, so that's, that's going to be uh, on my mind, and uh, when I feel like it's time, I will definitely let you guys know but it's been a pleasure uh being able to talk to y'all and play stuff for you and get some sense of the i don't know the community uh, appreciate the community appreciate the love um yeah um that's all i have to say y'all uh have a great evening take care of yourself take care of your loved ones see y'all soon